Hi, this is Tom Myers, and I'm uh, pleased to introduce you to this new series that we've got going, Fascial Essentials for the Movement Therapist. And um, I really would like to straighten out some of the, uh, shall we say, um, exaggerations that are going on uh, about fascia. Um, when I talk to, to exercise therapists, uh, personal trainers, about fascia, often they say to me, oh, fascia, yes, I know about that. That's the saran wrap around the muscles. And I really would like to take you into the story a lot deeper than that. The fact of the matter is that you're training your fascia no matter what you do. And the question is, could you do it better if you were doing it consciously? And I believe you can. TRX is training the fascia. CrossFit is training the fascia. Just sitting there. <laughs> If you're sitting there right now watching this thing, you're training your fascia in terms of sitting. It's always being trained, and it has such amazing properties to it. Like, for instance, here uh, from the toy store are two gummy bears. They're the same, well, they're gummy snakes or something. I don't know, gummy worms. They're gummy in any case. So is the mucopolysaccharides or glycoaminoglycans or all these long words for various kinds of mucus and snot. And it has this property of being viscoelastic, so that if I take this gummy bear and I stretch it slowly, I get this viscoelastic response of having the gummy bear. Now watch carefully, I'm gonna do it this way. Watch carefully when I let it go, there's gonna be a certain amount of elasticity. But then there's also this viscosity. You see what's happened to this one compared to the one that it was just like a minute ago. And if I were to put these down here, and leave them for a while, you'd see this one slowly coming back to be the same length as the other. It has a viscoelastic property. That's what fascia has, is a viscoelastic property. We can see that viscoelastic property in something like this, where uh, it takes and then regains its shape. Um, this is what happens to your joint fluid at the moment that you're catching a ball it suddenly goes splat, and then it comes right back into shape again. I don't know what this stuff is, but it's acting like uh, ground substance. And of course, in amongst the ground substance are all the fibers, like the collagen fibers. Um, this is a, a simple way, but uh, something that goes around a wine bottle, I guess I didn't get that in a toy store, but um, still has the same effect. Uh, this. If my hand were a muscle cell, this is how the fascia goes around that muscle cell. The, that double lattice arrangement turns out to be really important in the fascia to allow the fascia to stretch and allow the muscle to contract. So we're going to be going into how the fascia is arranged around the muscles, what happens to fascia in like the iliotibial band, where you get to a place where it won't stretch anymore, it won't grow anymore. Uh, we're going to be going into all of the areas of myofascial force transmission and into fascial elasticity, how the fascia, uh, which we didn't know before, not only can, is the fascia elastic, which I wouldn't have been telling you five years ago, that's pretty new. Uh, however, it's, it's not only elastic, but you can train the elasticity into the fascia. That's what folks are doing with the barefoot running and some of the elastic stretches that people are doing. Uh, back in the day, and I was alive back in the day, um, they did lots of ballistic stretching, and that's what Jane Fonda brought out in the beginning of the aerobics movement, uh, in, in the uh, first aerobics stuff. So that stuff is making a return now, because that's how you train elasticity into the fascia. The general big idea that I'd like us to get is this idea that the bones are floating within a balance of the soft tissue. So that when you are working with people with the soft tissue, you are changing how their skeleton works. It is not that you are just making the muscles stronger around the skeleton. You are actually changing the way they exist in space with the kind of work that you're doing. This tensegrity idea, or here you can see it in the form of a pelvis, so that if you watch this pelvis walk, uh, of course it's not exactly a pelvis, but it does show you how the hip bones have to move uh, with the legs in walking. This idea of the tensegrity is really important to understanding the role of the fascia in the body. We're also going to be going into the fascial neurology, how the brain finds out about the fascia. It turns out that the brain is very interested in the fascia and that you have more nerves in your fascia than way more nerves than you have in your muscles and way more nerves than you have even in your tongue or your eye. 
your brain is just incredibly interested in what's going on in your fascia with lots and lots of different kinds of stretch receptors. We're going to be looking into that and myofascial pain. And if I keep going on much longer, we'll have taken up the whole webinars, but we won't. Uh, come and see our series of five webinars on the essentials of fascia for the movement therapist.